welcome to a, another video of Raina Clothier. Um, today we'll be discussing the history of dress shoes and how everything came about essentially. So uh, we'll start. So if there's really one shoe to know, it's the Oxford. So the, the classic English dress shoe actually originated in Scotland and is also referred to as the Balmora, um, after the Balmora Castle. So the style first made an appearance in Europe um, in as early as 1640, but didn't become popular until the late 1800s. So after the shoe sleek kind of silhouette had been adopted by your English prep schools, um, and that's hence why they called it um, the Oxford. Now, before the introduction of the Oxford, um, there is what they called the laced up Oxford. So the most common footwear option was just a high top shoes um, that were fastened using buttons. So it's a little different than you see here as far as the laced up um, actual shoe itself. And then the bow tied laces were originally perceived as a Bent as more of a feminine look. <laughs> uh, so with no obviously denying that the lace-up design was more efficient and comfortable than buttoning up, uh, which kind of heightened the rate of adoption for that. So um, some historians actually attributed the term straight-laced uh, to the ways different people tied their Oxford, um, although it's still heavily debated right now within the shoe world, um, the classic shoe world. Now, the, the style had migrated stateside by the turn of the century. So, you know, where it fell into favor among American businessmen and entrepreneurs looking just to convey both professionalism and cosmopolitan, or cosmopolitan, uh, cosmopolitan heritage. Now, the 1920s saw the first experimentations with this style. So when the jazz and the flapper culture you know, really introduce an element of flamboyance um, using two-toned and, and contrasting leathers to create a really a sporty and a preppy look. Now, the signature feature of the Oxford is, is a closed lacing. So what that means is the eyelets are just attached directly beneath the vamp instead on top of it. Um, so today, they're most often encountered in boardroom settings and, and just tend to skew formal and although they can be worn in a way that really makes them decidedly more casual now among the many brands that are just well known for the oxfords um definitely look for companies like chini and sons um churches trickers um allen edmonds of course crockett and jones and eldon now, the next shoe is a derby, or people might call them a Gibson or a, um, a Blucher. So the derby, really the characteristic or is a feature is, is open lacing, so which differentiates from its near cousin, which is Oxford. Um, so because the underlying structural components are exposed, the derby is considered less refined and therefore less formal than its stylistic counterpart. So named after a 19th century Prussian general, which is, I um, think I may be saying his name incorrectly, so I do apologize um, as far as the pronunciation, but Gerbert Lebert von Blücher. Blücher. Um, so the Blücher or the Blücher origins are intertwined with Prussia's uh, military history. So it's really neat how it comes to fruition with that. And then von Blücher, Blücher commissioned the shoe design to replace a standard <clears throat> issue military boot in 1814, which was both impractical and uncomfortable. So the Blücher or the Derby enabled the general to just ready his troops for battle much, you know, much faster before, you know, because it was designed with laces and a below the ankle construction. So they can pull their shoes on and off with these. Now, Van Blucher and his troops really played a key role in the defeat of Napoleon Van Barden at Waterloo, which confers, you know, a level of historic importance of the shoes design that is. So perhaps, you know, unrivaled by any other. 
Now, contemporary, you know, ir uh, just irritations of the classic design can be seen, you know, in, in common projects and, you know, Mark McNary, although the classic style is best represented by the same crew as the Oxford. So your Chenia Sons, your uh, Churches, your Trickers, your Alamandmans, and Eldon. Um, the next shoe style is the Brogs. So the Brog is, is really perhaps the most important dress shoe style to date. So notable, you know, con contemporary designers like Tom Brown create seemingly just endless interpretations of the classic style. So the Brog was originally designed as a field shoe, um, but has since found its way into boardroom and formal settings. Now, while Brog can either be an Axford or Derby, the name comes from the Gaelic word Brog, which means shoe and refers to the decorative um, preparations along the exterior of the shoe. Um, so the brog patterns are generally configured according to four different cap styles. So what I mean by cap styles, there are full wing tip, there's semi, there's quarter, and there's long wing. Now, while, you know, now purely decorative, originally broguing had fully perforated holes that help drain water after wading through Scottish bogs. So that's a really neat little tidbit of the day for that part. And then if you're just planning on, you know, trekking through some marshes, uh, take a preliminary trip to, you know, Trickers, the Sanders, um, or even Alden to stock up on a classic pair of brogs. So really wonderful to have. Um, the next shoe style is, and the history of it is, Monk Straps. So the monk strap is currently the most, how would I say, rackish of classic dress shoe styles. So, um, but as the name really suggests, it was originally designed as a dressier and a more durable alternative to sandals for European monks, um, hence the monk <laughs> strap. Uh, so essentially a work shoe, you know, monk straps traditionally feature a cap toe, to provide additional protection. So they are structurally similar to a blucher, but you know, monk straps, you know, there there's a skew type laces and favor buckles, um, either one or two, um, which you know, which make them exceptionally just easy to take on and off. And the next one is well, more on the um the buckle side of it. So the buckle the buckle places you know, monk strap in a just a liminal space between a derby and a loafer in terms of just formality. So leaving the top buckle unbuckle, unbuckled um, is an affection, really just uh, like an affectation related to break in period, just associated with the high vamp shoes, um, but also, you know, come to just convey an air of how would you say just but at stura. Um, within fashion circles, so especially like an Italian style as well. So Atlanta-based designer, his name is Sid Mashburn, uh, with his eye just for prep, you know, American prep style, um, you know, with kind of infused with a Italian style, is partially credited with the recent resurgence of the monast, uh, just the monastic shoes popularity. So although many will just point to a gentleman named Lino Lelusi um, as the true prognator of the trend. Um, so if you're looking to pick up a pair, you know, head to either Edward Green, John Lobb, very, very known in um, in England, Alfred Sargret, J. Crew, or of course Sid Mashburn there in Atlanta, um, all of whom just, pres just preserve the original details of the classic style. Now, that is really going to do it um, as far as the, the couple styles that I mentioned. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to comment, share, and like this video or even email me as well. i uh, love to answer any questions. love to learn more about um, dress shoe wear. Uh, if you guys have any questions, again, uh, reach out to me. Or if you'd like to order any type of custom-made garments, sport coats, two-piece suits, three-piece suits, 
um, dress shirts. Uh, we are here to serve you here in Austin, but we service all of our clients all over the world. Uh, with the beauty of technology, we embrace it and we are ready to serve you. So again, hope you guys have a wonderful day and take care.